and we are rolling. Hey guys, it's your buddy Jake Dominguez, back with another movie review. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, did he go into McDonald's after he saw this movie because he bought into all the product placement and stuff? Well, no, I did not go into McDonald's. I went to JCW's, which is another burger place here in my state. So the product placement kind of worked. Yeah, moving on. So today, of course, we are going to review The Founder, a movie I was really excited to see. The Founder tells the true story of Ray Kroc, the legendary Ray Kroc, who is a who in this movie, as we've seen in the beginning, is pretty much a failed businessman, a failed salesman, just struggling to get by, can't get any deals done. And how he met the McDonald's brothers and found their absolutely revolutionary restaurant, the first fast food restaurant, McDonald's. And it tells the story of how he worked with the McDonald's brothers to make it the franchise he did, you know, it is today. And how he basically full-on took the institution from them and made it his own. So pretty shady stuff in this movie. I was excited to see this movie for two things. Number one, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton is a great actor. I am a big fan of all the films he did with Tim Burton. Obviously, he was Batman. I really love him in Beetlejuice. He's so awesome in that movie. And he's been in lots of other great movies. And even in, like, the worst, most lousy films, Michael Keaton has always been awesome. He's always really funny. In the last few years, he's really made kind of a renaissance. And people started to recognize, hey, he is a great actor with films like Birdman and Spotlight. Oh, my gosh. Spotlight. I mean, the acting was amazing in that movie. And it could, I knew that the role of Ray Kroc would, would be a perfect fit for him. And it is. We'll get back to that in a moment. But the other thing I was excited to see this movie for, more than anything, was the man who directed it, John Lee Hancock. Now, if you go to somebody and ask you know, them, hey, who are your favorite directors? It would probably be a pretty normal list. You know, There's, there's some directors that are bound to, sh to show up in that list. Steven Spielberg, Christopher Nolan... Who else? Martin Scorsese, Stanley Kubrick, Alfred Hitchcock, you know, the, the typical list. John Lee Hancock may not appear on that list very much, which shows how much lists are really worth any day. But I've always been a huge fan of him. He made so many great movies. I'm a huge fan of a film that he wrote called A Perfect World that was directed by Clint Eastwood and stars Kevin Costner. Such a great movie. Very underappreciated, outstanding screenplay. And he's worked on a lot of other things. His most famous work is probably The Blind Side, which of course got Sandra Bullock her Oscar. I really love Saving Mr. Banks. I thought, I was so surprised by how much I loved that movie. It was great. And he's done lots of other great stuff. He's had a few bad, kind of mediocre works here or there, like everybody does. I wasn't crazy about his film The Alamo. I thought it was just sort of okay, but it was well done. It was interesting. And so I'm a big fan of the guy, and he's one of those filmmakers that I always want to see what he does. And I knew that this story was a pretty good fit for his sensibilities. It's very much about, you know, classic America, American values, and what they really are, and that sort of thing. So I was excited to see this movie, and I thought this movie was pretty interesting overall. It is pretty heartbreaking in the end. We see this guy, Ray Kroc... And he is a nobody. You know, he like I said, he's a failed salesman. And on one hand, we see him become, well, a somebody. We see him become the the like the founder of McDonald's. He became he became more than rich. He became a king. <laughs> he was a complete he, he, uh, oh as far as salesmen go, he was the most successful salesman you can be. As for everything else, his marriage loyalty, values, etc., etc., not so much. And watching him try to make, the, you know, McDonald's happen, trying to make this revolutionary idea brought by the McDonald's brothers, a fast food restaurant, come to life, I found pretty interesting in this movie. You ever hear the expression, 
uh, truth is stranger than fiction. That's definitely the case in this film. You see the creation of how all this took place. How the McDonald's brothers came up with the idea to make a fast food restaurant. How uh, Ray Kroc went ahead and sold this idea to be a franchise and that sort of thing. And it's pretty interesting. I was pretty into that part of the story. I also was into the story of watching Ray Kroc kind of make bad choices. I mean, his wife in this film is played by Laura Dern, who is does an excellent job, and it's heartbreaking. I won't, I won't, I don't want to get into spoilers, but oh, uh, it's upsetting. It's upsetting, and. As portrayed in this film, we don't see Lay Croc lose a lot of sleep over it either, if you know what I mean. So, it definitely is difficult to watch from that, th from that perspective, but it is pretty fascinating. What really makes this movie work is the cast. I mentioned Michael Keaton earlier, and yeah, he's great in this movie. In fact, he's the best part of this movie, easily. He's, he's excellent. He does an absolutely fantastic job. Laura Dern, just mentioned, she's great as well. I didn't even know she was in this movie. I was really happy to see her there. And she does great, and she breaks her heart. The, now, the men who play the two McDonald's brothers are Nick Offerman and John Carroll Lynch. I believe that's his name. You know, perfect casting. They do they do absolutely great job. All the acting is great. Patrick Wilson is in the film, and he does a great job. All the acting is on point, and that is by far the best thing in this movie, especially Michael Keaton. I mean, he's on fire. It's a perfect role for him. It was, it's tailor-made for, you know, his style of acting. It's such a great part for him. My main criticism with the founder and the thing that kept me from really loving it was just the script itself. Now, the script was written by, I believe his name is Robert Siegel. Very talented screenwriter, and it's a good script, but some of the pacing isn't always the best in this film. A lot of the second act, a good deal of it, did feel a little stretched at times. And it was kind of like, okay, can we get back to, like, you know, the thing with the brothers. Ray Kroc dealing with the brothers, that is. Or some of, like, that sort of thing. It wasn't really always that engaging. Not that it was bad, either. It just wasn't always engaging. And there were times where it's kind of like, okay, can we, can we move on, you know? It did feel a little long and stretched at times. And it's not really... I feel like a lot of times when, when people go to see these biopics, they're full-on expecting a kind of Lawrence of Arabia massive film. And some people might go into this expecting that. But it really isn't. It's very low budget. It's a small film. You could take this parts of this movie and adopt it to the stage. Because really, it's a drama that's focused on people talking, and that is not a bad thing. In fact, I love it for that, but some people might be a little taken off guard by that. One pro other problem I have with the film, it's almost a nitpick, and I don't even really know how to explain it, but uh, towards the first act, they did this thing where they showed like vintage photographs when showing the past. It's during kind of like a flashback, kind of when someone's telling a story to another person. And it looked like they created their own vintage photographs, if that makes sense. And they made them kind of... You know, it looked like they put they dressed up actors and made it all black and white and color-coded so it looked like a vintage photograph. I don't even know if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain, but I wasn't a big deal of that. I wasn't a big fan of that. It didn't really work for me. It looked a little fakey, but that was only done once in the movie. Which, I, I can't complain too much about that. Overall, I thought this was a pretty interesting movie. I enjoyed it overall. Am I going to run back and see it right away? You know, again? Probably not. And I think, if anything, it's an interesting story. And it's very interesting to, again, see a man go from something... Excuse me, go from nothing to something. And to see these two other brothers who had this great idea end up with nothing. I mean, they were screwed over, and that's really heartbreaking to see in this movie. So that I really did enjoy, and in the end, I'm going to give the founder a B. Pretty solid movie. I, I would recommend checking this movie out. You may not need to rush out at theaters to see it, but rent it, check it out. I think it, it is worth seeing. I think John Lee Hancock is a great filmmaker, and again, I'm always going to be looking out for what he does next. Now, guys, quick channel update. I'm working on a big project that I'm super excited to share on this channel in just a little while. 
I'm super excited. I'm not going to say what it is next, but let's just say it might be involved with my shirt I'm now wearing right now. That's your little clue. So uh, stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for liking. If For watching, excuse me. Oh, gosh. I need to get used to saying that, do I? If you like this video, go ahead and click on that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And most importantly, I'm always there for you guys. Never forget that. I'm your friend. Thanks for being mine. You guys are the best. I'll see you next time.